Welcome back to Collective Histories, my friends. You know, a few weeks ago, we started this series looking at the history of the UK political parties. And then after part two, we just kind of left it for a while. We explored other avenues. But I think it's time we conclude this series. So let's just dive right in. But first, subscribe to us, please. I beg you. OK, see see how quick that was. This We're evolving. This is called progress. OK, so last time we left off with, I believe, the Social Democratic and Labour Party of Northern Ireland. So for the next party, and it's been a while, I should probably just go over this again. We are doing it in chronological order. And last time we left off with the Social Democratic Labour Party, which was founded in 1970. We have so far covered the Conservative Party, the Labour Party, Sinn Féin, Plaid Cymru, the SNP, and the SDLP. And now we are going to move on to another Northern Irish party founded in 1970, and that's the Alliance Party of Northern Ireland. So the Alliance Party of Northern Ireland is a centre to centre left liberal non sectarianist pro European political party within Northern Ireland and it's currently led by Naomi Long. It has one seat in Westminster. So the Alliance Party in Northern Ireland was founded in 1970 with the aim of promoting non sectarian politics and bridging the gap between the Catholic nationalist and Protestant unionist communities in Northern Ireland, which of course there was a big divide between Catholics and Protestants then, kind of still there today, maybe not to the same extent, but who am I to comment on? On this. I'm a Welshman. The party emerged in a highly polarised political landscape during the Troubles, a period of ethno-nationalist conflict and violence in Northern Ireland that lasted from the late 1960s to the 1990s. The Alliance Party was founded on April 21st, 1970 by a group of individuals from various backgrounds who saw an alternative to the polarised politics dominated by the Unionist and Nationalist parties. During the early years of its existence, the Alliance Party advocated for non-sectarianism, integration and power sharing between the Unionist and Nationalist communities. In 1973, the Sunningdale Agreement was reached, which established a power-sharing executive in Northern Ireland. Alliance Party leader at the time, Oliver Napius, served as a member of the executive. The power-sharing executive collapsed in 1974 due to opposition from within the unionist community, and this marked a challenging period for the Alliance Party as it struggled to maintain political relevance. The party faced internal divisions and a decline in electoral support during the 1980s. But the signing of the Good Friday Agreement in 1998 marked a significant turning point for Northern Northern Ireland. The Alliance Party played a role in the negotiations leading up to the agreement, as most parties in Northern Ireland did. The Good Friday Agreement established a devolved government with power-sharing arrangements, and the Alliance Party has continued to support this framework. The Alliance Party has maintained a commitment to non-sectarian politics and has been involved in the devolved institutions established by the Good Friday Agreement, including the Northern Ireland Assembly and the Executive. The party has had periods of electoral success with members holding ministerial positions in the devolved government. And the Alliance Party has been vocal on issues relating to Brexit and its impact on Northern Ireland. It has positioned itself as a pro-European and pro-agreement party, and the party has continued to work towards fostering a shared future for all communities in Northern Ireland. So while it's faced challenges in navigating the deeply divided political landscape of Northern Ireland, its commitment to non-sectarian principles and efforts to bridge the gap between communities has positioned it as a unique player in the region's politics. And in some ways, you know, it's kind of like the Northern Irish Liberal Democrats party. The Lib Dems we still have to get to, and we're hoping to in this video, by the way. I can't Wait. We love the Liberal Democrats here at Collective Histories. I promise you. Okay, so next we move on to the Democratic Unionist Party, also known as the DUP, which was founded in 1971. It is characterized as a right-wing British Unionist, British Nationalist, right-wing populist, and Eurosceptic party, and is currently led by a man named Jeffrey Donaldson. So uh, let's dive right into this party. So the DUP, again, was founded in 1971, and it it's considered to be one of the, if not the, most successful party in Northern Irish politics. The party has been closely associated with Protestant and Unionist causes and has played a significant role in shaping Northern Ireland's political landscape. It was founded by Ian Paisley in 1971, a prominent Protestant clergyman and politician. The party was established in response to what Paisley perceived as insufficient staunch Unionist positions taken by the traditional Ulster Unionist Party, which was the UUP. In its early years, the DUP opposed power sharing arrangements with nationalist parties and expressed strong opposition to any form of Irish unification. Ian Paisley was known for his fiery rhetoric and staunch defence of Protestant and Unionist interests. The St Andrews Agreement of 2006 paved the way for the restoration of devolved government in Northern Ireland. The DUP, then under the leadership of Paisley, agreed to share power with Sinn Féin. In 2007, Paisley became the first minister of Northern Ireland, with Martin McGuinness of Sinn Féin serving as deputy first minister, which marked a significant development 
within the peace process. However, Paisley stepped down as DUP leader and first minister in 2008. Peter Robinson succeeded him as party leader and first minister. The party continues to be a major force in Northern Irish politics, advocating for unionist interests within the devolved institutions. The DUP played a key role in British politics when it entered into a confidence and supply agreement, essentially a coalition, with the Conservative Party after the woeful 2017 general election, and I mean woeful for then Prime Minister Theresa May. Jeez, remember her? This arrangement provided support to the Conservative government on key votes. Brexit became a contentious issue, and the DUP opposed elements of the withdrawal agreement, particularly the Northern Ireland Protocol, which aimed to avoid a hard border on the island of Ireland. It should be noted that Arlene Foster was then the leader, and Arlene Foster was taking a... I mean, she was more extreme than Paisley, in many ways. I, I'm not a big fan of the DUP. I can't pretend that I like them. And, uh, yeah, didn't like them, especially during this period, because it was they reached a point where they affected the rest of us, too, not just Northern Ireland. Arlene Foster succeeded Peter Robinson as the leader of the DUP and became the first minister of Northern Ireland in 2016. The party faced challenges, including internal disagreements and shifts in public opinion. The implementation of the Northern Ireland Protocol post-Brexit created tensions, and the DUP continued to voice concerns about its impact on trade and unionist identity. The party faced electoral challenges, and its influence in Westminster diminished after the 2019 general election, and now its influence has diminished even further within Northern Ireland, as Sinn Féin has become the most popular party in the region, and it's very good to see. But I didn't say that because this is completely unbiased. Anyway, the DUP has been a significant player in Northern Irish politics, representing the unionist community and shaping the course of devolved government. Its history is marked by a commitment to maintaining Northern Ireland's place within the United Kingdom and advocating for the interests of the Protestant unionist population. Okay, next we have the Liberal Democrats. Nick Clegg, I want to fight you. Where are you, man? So Doe sharing the name Liberal Party with the old Liberal Party, that old electoral force within the United Kingdom, which no longer exists. Well, the Liberal Democrats is a different party, which evolved from it. So the Liberal Democrats, often referred to as the Lib Dems, is a centrist political party within the United Kingdom. It formed in 1988 through the merger of the old Liberal Party and the Social Democratic Party, or the SDP. And the Lib Dems have played a role in British politics ever since, particularly in advocating for civil liberties, social justice, and constitutional reform. They are often seen as centre to centre-left, also centre-right. They are liberal, social liberal, and they are very pro-European, and currently led by Ed Davey. So the Lib Dems were officially formed on March the 3rd, 1988, through the merger of the Lib Dems and Social Democratic Party. The merger aimed to create a more effective centrist alternative to the two major parties, which, of course, were and are the Conservative and Labour parties. The early years of the Lib Dems were marked by leadership changes and efforts to establish the party as a credible political force. Paddy Ashdown became the party's first leader, leading it through the 1992 general election. But their big success would come in the 2010 general election. The Lib Dems, then led by Nick Clegg, entered into a coalition government with the Conservative Party. I love the coalition. This marked the first coalition government in the UK since World War II. Would you believe it? There was lots before that, and yeah, that's an interesting step. The coalition government faced challenges, particularly regarding tuition fees. Nick Clegg, again, we're looking at you. And other policy differences leading to a decline in the party's popularity. The Lib Dems have been strong advocates for constitutional reform, including electoral reform, devolution, and changes to the House of Lords. The party has also emphasized civil liberties, human rights, and environmental issues in its policy agenda. After the 2015 general election, which the party experienced a significant reduction in seats as a result of the five-year coalition government, which did a lot to damage their liberal reputation, might I add. Tim Farron became the leader of the Liberal Democrats. And after 2017, the general election and Vince Cable, or Sir Vince Cable, if you are that way inclined, succeeded Tim Farron as leader in 2017. And then Joe Swinson took over the leadership in 2019. And that didn't last long because she was unseated in the 2019 general election. The Lib Dems took a clear anti-Brexit stance during the 2019 general election, advocating for a second referendum on the UK's membership within the European Union. And despite not achieving a significant breakthrough in terms of seats, the party saw an increase in its vote share because they had positioned themselves as a pro-second referendum party, whereas the Labour Party was very uncertain on what it wanted to be, and the Conservative Party was devout as a Brexit party. So they did well to take votes from Labour in this election. But not for Joe Swinson, who lost her seat. 
rather funny. The Lib Dems continued to focus on issues such as climate change, social justice, and constitutional reforms. The party has positioned itself as a pro-European and centrist alternative in British politics, and under the leadership of Ed Davey, it's trying to act as a more radical liberal party because the Labour Party has kind of gone in a more right-wing, less radical direction post-Jeremy Corbyn, and the Conservatives are even more conservative and populist than ever, so the Lib Dems are trying to position themselves as the radical alternative to these two. Throughout its history, the Lib Dems have been characterized by their commitment to liberalism, social democracy, and an emphasis on civil liberties. The party has played a role in shaping political debates and policies, especially in areas related to constitutional reform and social issues. They continue to be one of the biggest parties within the United Kingdom. Okay, we only have two parties left within Westminster to cover, and we are running out of time, so I'm just going to quickly tell you who they are, I guess. So we have the Green Party of England and Wales, which was founded in 1990, is positioned as a left-wing climate activist party. Its main priorities are green politics, progressivism, and pro-Europeanism, and it's currently led by Carla Denyer and Adrian Ramsey, who serve as co-leaders. It had a great period of growth in the 2015 general election, and it was very unfortunate to only have one seat, still held today by Caroline Lucas. And yeah, it's it's a good party. I quite enjoy the Green Party. Maybe one day we'll do a more in-depth video on them. And then we have the Elba Party, which is the newest party, and it was founded in 2021 as an alternative to the SNP. It was kind of founded over factionalism, and Alex Salmond, the former SNP powerhouse, kind of had a fallout with Nicola Sturgeon, essentially, and he threw a tantrum and he founded the Elba Party, which is also a Scottish nationalist and Scottish independence party, and I don't know why it exists. It's pretty much exactly the same as the SNP, so he only did this, in my opinion, to spite his former party and Nicola Sturgeon. So, yeah, that concludes the series. We finally made it. Oh my god, it took weeks. So, we look forward to bringing you more content in the future. We'll be continuing with the Lost Civilization series soon. I quite enjoy making that one. Please subscribe. See, I did it again. Very quick. Please subscribe. And then, if you want to do more, you can follow us on facebook.com forward slash collective histories page and on Instagram at instagram.com forward slash the collective histories and on Twitter slash x at twitter.com forward slash collective histo and you can buy me a coffee if you are that kind and i'll be very grateful that's buymeacoffee.com forward slash collective history so that's everything we'll be back later in the week for our next video and remember we do videos every day daily content daily content we have on this day in history content every single day so please check them out too okay we'll be back very soon we wish you the best and yeah just watch out for nick clegg i guess okay goodbye